Welcome, welcome back. If this is not your first time, if it is your first time, you picked a fantastic um, video to join us on. Today, I will be using my homegirl, Jenny, here. Uh, my nails have been a little bit rough. Um, I'm not really accustomed to having nails on all the time. And because I haven't been able to master the pop-off method, they a little rough. So, we're going to go ahead and work on Jenny today. Today is also a very special day. Today is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the other mothers out there. Um, you know, today's all about you and the things that you do for your children and your family. Um, today I'm going to be doing a set that my oldest daughter actually designed for me. She's a young teen. Um, she's very artistic. She's very creative and she came up with these nails for me. I'm so excited to be able to recreate them um, and bring her design to life. Here we're just going to prep the thumb. I prepped all the other nails on Jenny's hand already. We're going to remove the extra nail at the free edge and then we're just going to round out the edge, make it nice and smooth and we're going to remove the cuticle area and we are also going to remove the shine from the nail. Um, so that is what we're going to be doing here. While we, I do that, um, I want to go ahead and pop up on the screen um, the design that my daughter had. I think that it's super cute. Uh, she's a little bit eccentric like I am, so she likes, you know, anime and gothy type of things. Um, so I really like this set that she came up with. I like the little moon and the vibe. Um, and in order to recreate this set today, I am going to be mixing my um, little custom acrylic with um, some model ones that I already had. Um, we're going to throw some glitter into those. And here I just like to use the round edge of my file um, on these practice hands. When I work on a real person, um, I do my prep quite differently. Possibly in another video I will... Um, do a prep video with the practice hand. I'm hoping that I can secure my pop-off method uh, reasonably soon so that I can just do them on myself again. This cute little brush actually came with this practice hand. I got it off of Amazon and if you're looking for an inexpensive way to practice um, on someone else, I will go ahead and link this down below so that you can go ahead and find it on Amazon. Here are the things that I'm going to be using in this nail set today. Yes, those are my rough nails. Um, so we're going to be using this um, like navy blue model ones. It is number 116. We're going to be using that um, as well as, I believe I only used one of these glitters. And then we're going to be using the number 106 model one, which is this very pale pastel pink. And I did end up putting in two of these glitters, although I think only one would have been necessary. But I did end up using both. And then for the stars, instead of trying to draw them on because my nail art with gel is not fantastic yet, I'm going to be picking out some silver and some black stars out of that bag right there. So this is everything that I'm going to be using for the actual nail art as well as my Kiara Sky monomer. We're going to go ahead and before we start anything, we're going to mix our custom acrylics so that they are ready and um, to go when I'm ready to start the nails themselves. So I'm just going to be taking, I think I used quite a bit of this pink model one. I believe it's like six or seven scoops. Um, and I'm just going to put um, some of the powder into a spare cleaned dappen dish um, just to give me somewhere um, to mix it. I did not want to use a plastic container in case um, you know some of the monomer got into the dish because I don't know if you've ever had the experience but monomer destroys plastic. Um, it eats away at plastic um, very easily. Um, and we're going to go ahead and put a little bit of this purple glitter in. And then we're also going to add some of the more pinky glitter. 
um, and you're going to see that I did uh, swatch it first to see what the color and the consistency was like and I was not happy with it it came out a little bit too purple for the um, color and design that my daughter had chosen so you will see me go back in and add more of the pink acrylic to the mix just so that I can get the proper color um, when working with model ones it is a little bit difficult for me because it does have such a different consistency than other acrylics that I've used um, and it seems to vary between colors I know that colored acrylics can sometimes be chalky or have a very different consistency but when it comes to the model ones I feel like they have a much different consistency and I'm not sure if that's because I've always used a different monomer than model ones or if that's just the consistency of the acrylic but um, this pink one with the glitter like when you pick up a bead of acrylic you'll notice that it polymerizes um, you can tell that it is polymerizing because it'll get that shiny wet cons um, like look to it it'll glisten it'll get like a wet look to it um, and this pink one in particular it did not get that glossy finish um, when swatching um, the blue one did so I don't know if that's because of the pigment that's in it or why the model ones acrylics are like that they just are um, and as you can see this color is much closer to the pink um, that was in the photo that my daughter sent me so I ended up keeping it at that now we're just gonna go ahead and mix the blue color again we are going to use this um, navy blue I believe the number was 116 um, and for some reason even though I had more fingers of this color and less of the pink I ended up mixing less of this acrylic um, but it didn't really matter because I had some left over at the end of both colors which I just threw into a container um, and I'll probably use them on some random thing later um, but yeah so I did just do um, semi odd some odd amount of scoops of the acrylic into the dampened dish and then I decided to choose this lighter blue um, glitter to go into the acrylic because the speckles that were in the picture of the nails that my daughter um, sent for me to create were lighter um, and I believe that this one was perfect in my opinion on the first mix so I don't think I had to go back and add anything So now I'm just going to do a test swatch to see um, what the result of my mixing has got me. And you can kind of see here, like when I picked up that bead, that it got that shiny um, color to it. Although if you look very closely at the swatch, you'll see that the middle of the bead is more of like a grayish color. So I don't know if that's from the colors that they mix together to get the final result. Um, so now I'm just going to go ahead and apply my tips and you're going to notice that the tip is not sticking and that's because for some reason my bright self decided to put, because um, I was originally going to do like prep in this video, so I decided to put primer on top of the nails before I put the nail glue and primer and nail glue do not mix. Um, so a big tip for you when doing especially on natural nails that you want to keep your set make sure that if any of your nail glue does spill over um, onto the nail plates um, before you put your primer that you buff that off completely because that will cause a weird area that the acrylic will not stick to um, because primer and glue just do not mix the chemicals do not mix and it forms like a rubbery sticky substance um, and the acrylic will not adhere even if it cures and you will get lifting in a weird spot and possible breakage from the nail tip not being secure um, so I just went ahead and I ended up buffing off the primer so that I could stick the nail tip and now I'm gonna go ahead and go in with the acrylic mix that I made and now that it's focused, you can kind of see that this acrylic powder is 
it's very weird like it does not quite flow like other acrylics um, it's kind of sticky like it sticks to the brush a lot even though I'm not applying a lot of pressure and I'm just using the body of my brush as I would any other time it's just a very weird consistency to work with um, I mean it still got the job done don't get me wrong and I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with it because I don't know um, you know I'm not an expert at acrylic it's just something that I've started doing at home for myself and that I enjoy I'm just saying that it has a much different consistency than other acrylics do that I've worked with um, so it is a little difficult for me to apply it how I normally would which is why you'll see that I use um, many 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 beads to get the results that I'm looking for moving on to the ring the ring finger um, I'm pretty much just gonna be doing the same thing that I did on the thumb the only difference is I'm not gonna try to be as picky about my application because I already know that the product is going to be difficult so I kind of decided when doing the thumb that instead of trying to build the nail with this acrylic that I'm gonna just kind of get my color coverage um, and then I will go in and build the nail and the structure and even out the shape with a clear cap since I'm going to be capping it anyway because I'm going to be adding the stars and it does have glitter in it. So this part of the process was relatively quick. Um, you know, I did just try to get the color as opaque as possible. I'm going to be using my Mia Secret Clear. Um, I put down a very, very, very thin layer, just something um, thin enough that I can stick the stars to, but not really enough to give any thickness or shape. Um, and I'm going to just use my little wax pencil here to apply the stars. And I'm kind of just sticking them wherever. I'm just going to divide the stars between the two nails. Um, and I just wanted to get these two done and out of the way because the next three nails are going to be a much darker color. And I wasn't sure how the color payoff was going to be or if there was going to be any fallout on the brush. So I didn't want to try to clear cap all of them at the same time. I wanted to do the two lighter colors by themselves. And even right here, you can see how the consistency of the Mia Secret acrylic differs. Um, you're able to get a really good bead. Um, it is easier to manipulate and maneuver around the nail into the shape that you want. And it's just an overall different consistency and application process. Um, and this is just what the thumb and the ring finger look like with the stars and the clear cap. Um, this is the blue acrylic that I mixed. And we're just going to go ahead and start the application with the blue acrylic that I mixed up. Um, and even the blue acrylic, if you look really closely, like you can see that even the blue one had a different consistency. Um, I don't know if it's because the pigment used to mix the pink was denser or I'm not really sure. I'm not sure how they mix their colors, um, but it was quite different. I mean, it actually was kind of the same consistency. I did kind of decide that, yeah, I'm just going to um, use these acrylics. And look, you see, you kind of see that marbling like there was like a gray patch there real quick. It's just kind of weird. I think it's just the way that they mix their acrylics. Um, I do know that the black acrylic from this collection that I bought from them, it does not dry. It's like weird. It like has like a rubbery consistency. Like it dries to like a rubbery texture. It doesn't dry to like a hardened acrylic. So when I use the black from this brand or the black from that collection, it might be a different um, formula by now. Um, I have had this collection, this um, Model 1's collection since last year when I first started. Um, 
so at the end of the summer it will have been a year since I had it and I did buy it on Amazon I did not buy it from the model ones company so I don't know how long Amazon had it but um you know, it, it's just a weird product for me to work with. I think I'm just so used to Mia Secret and Young Nails um, that, you know, the formula is just weird to me. But, you know what I mean? We made do with what we had and I made it work. And it's not a hard... I've worked... I've used much worse acrylics. Like, it's not a horrible acrylic. It just has a very weird formula. And especially now that I've been getting my liquid to powder ratio down more... And that I have been learning how to work with my acrylic beads on the nail more. It's just hard to apply that proper um, procedure, like that proper application technique when using this powder. Because it kind of forces you to just work with it how you can. Um, and I notice it on some of the nails, like this one ended up being a little wonky. Um, I did build up the sides to fix the shape. That's one of the things about me. Um, I am working on my shaping. Um, I think it's gotten a lot better. It definitely has gotten a lot better, but I am still working on my shaping. So a lot of times you'll see me go in with more product afterwards just to build up those spots that I'm missing. Um, you know, and to me, as long as I'm able to continuously get better, if I have to go back and rebuild up a section, the finished product... Um, you know, as long as I'm not there eight hours fixing the nails that I did in the first place, the finished product, you know, and the finished design and idea coming to fruition is what's most important to me. That even if I do face setbacks in my application or, you know, my technique is not doing me any justice, that I'm able to go back and find a way to fix it and find a way to make it work. Um, you know, being able to think on your feet will help you in a lot of situations but especially in nails and anything else that's artistic um you know so just keep that in mind when working with products if you're having a hard time or you know if it's one product in particular like this one that's giving you a hard time do what you can you know try to find a way to make it work um you know the only real thing stopping us from doing you know the things that we want and achieving what we want is ourselves you know we got to be willing to put in the time and the effort and um you know really stick with ourselves on things and push ourselves um as you can see here i was ready to pack it up and to save the acrylic powders and so i did end up having a little bit left over and again with the blue just like the pink i used just a very thin thin layer of acrylic to stick the stars to the nails um, and you will also see me once I go back and cap these that I do use some of the clear acrylic to also build up some of the sections um, on the nail that I'm not happy with um, my daughter did specify that she wanted these ballerina unfortunately I'm not great at shaping tips that are not already formed and I only had um, coffin tips that was the closest thing that I had and I did not want to struggle on this nail set I wanted to make sure that I got it out in time for Mother's Day because that's what me and her had agreed we were going to do and that's something that we wanted to do um, you know it's kind of like a mother daughter you know special type thing for Mother's Day because she knows I'm doing um, a YouTube channel now so I just ended up using my coffin tips and um, you know using the acrylic to build up the size and then I go in with my file afterwards and round it out just to give it more of a ballerina shape. So especially here, um, you'll see me clear cap um, these blue ones a lot more than I did the pink because the pink was just so tacky that I wanted to hurry up and get them clear capped so that I didn't keep smudging them because the acrylic was just not drying. You'll notice how easy it is to apply the Mia Secret clear, although it's still going to be a little bit different because there's no pigment so it is going to be just a very raw acrylic there's no pigment there's nothing added it's just straight up clear acrylic so it is going to be an easier application normally anyway but it's such a huge drastic difference um i think i'm just not used to the the acrylics or they're just too chalky for me i'm not sure they have beautiful colors for sure um I really enjoyed the colors that I got in the kit that I had bought. I can't even remember which one it is at this point just because I've had them for so long. 
um but yeah so i'm just gonna clear cap these and then we're going to get into the filing and as i said in my last video i am so sorry about my voice right now my allergies this year are kicking my butt and i have a lot of foster kittens right now um i did take on two pregnant moms um at the end of winter um and they've both given birth by now so and i'm allergic to cats even though i have four of my own so that given with the extreme pollen in my area right now i am struggling um, and I really can't take anything for my allergies because I do have an 11 month old that I'm still breastfeeding. So I'm very picky about what I put into my body right now. So, you know, I'm just eating a lot of citrus fruit. I don't know if anybody's ever experienced that, but if you have um, allergies, like real bad allergies or congestion, stay away from anything with sugar, like um, concentrated juices, and stay away from anything with dairy because sugar and dairy will create more of an issue in that area but enough about my allergies um i'm just gonna finish <laughs> clear capping this nail um and then we're going to get into the filing process so while i did try to include a lot more of my filing i'm sorry that i skipped over the pinky I did not like the angle that my camera was at, my phone was at. I'm trying to figure out the best way to film these videos because the um, the stand that I have and the phone that I have, it's been, I'm just trying to find out the best way to do these angles. Um, and I found this to be very helpful. Um, although I think that the camera will be, would be better on my left side because I am right handed. So my right hand does get in the way a lot. Um, I also want to touch on this nail here is the wonky one and I mentioned earlier that I did use the um, clear acrylic and I did use the file to um, kind of like adjust the shape and the curve of the nail um, so you'll see that here I am slowly just taking it down and you'll see that I do file the left hand side which was a little bit straight and wonky there goes the nail um that's the only bad thing about these hands although this one is not as bad as some that i had seen um reviewed they only pop off when i'm like super super aggressive um so i need to be a little more tender handed but you will see me file um at a curved angle to bring that more to like a ballerina taper than to um a uh, like coffin although they say ballerina and coffin are the same thing but ballerinas are more curved on the side um, but this one did end up still being wonky but I think that in the end I did the best that I could and I got it as close to the shape that my daughter had wanted as possible um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish up the filing I do point out a couple things as I'm filing as you've noticed um, so go ahead and enjoy that and as you'll see i do come across the nail from the middle to the sides and i bring it back up over the side because a lot of issues with shape sometimes that i have been learning um, from watching videos and from you know applying acrylic myself come from not the sides of the nail but the top so if you're filing the sides and you notice that your shape is still off look down the barrel of the nail look from the tip to the cuticle and oftentimes you will see the issue um that's kind of what i'm doing here you see me look down the barrel of the nail um and you'll notice that from filing the sides and underneath you're still leaving that top layer of acrylic that overhangs on the sides and will give your nails more of a bulk to them or a misshape than you want um so just make sure that you're always looking at every angle of the nail look from the sides look from the top you know look from um the tip to the cuticle you know really look at all sides just so that you can um identify any lumps any craters any divots anything like that um and file accordingly so that you can get your best possible shape 
um, and I don't believe that I showed it here, but always turn either your client or your nails up to, so that you can see the angle from what they're going to be looking at because that's going to be another way that you can see, there goes another nail, <laughs> um, that you can see like the nail from all angles, um, you know, just so that you can see anywhere that you've missed. And then I am going to go in and give them a quick buff. Um, another issue that I had with this acrylic, both the blue and the pink, is normally when you're applying acrylic, you can use multiple beads. And as long as you are using the body of the brush to manipulate them correctly, you can get a seamless application. Um, with this acrylic, I did notice that, especially after I had filed um and even though I had clear capped, um, there were weird marks, I think from like the different layers of acrylic, and I think that the clear had settled into them, and that's why it gave it that shape, but there were just like weird marks on the nails that I've never seen when applying acrylic before, so not really sure what was going on with there. So we're, I went in and I cleaned off the nails with some swipe. Um, to see if there was anywhere else that I needed to buff And it was really only that one nail that still had one of those weird lines So I'm gonna clean off all of the dust and get it ready for our um, top coat and our nail glue our um, Like rhinestone glue, which I did use the Beatles Rhinestone glue. I do intend on picking up some McCart to try it out. I just don't like the glue in the pot um, it's very difficult to work with and when I do put large charms on top I do often have issues with it um, with them popping off so I'm gonna go in with the rhinestone glue and with the little gold charms and I realized that these were not quite curved enough for these nails so you're gonna see me take it off real quick um, I do apologize that I used my fingers to do that you really shouldn't but um, I did just because I'm on my practice hand um, you should avoid trying to touch nail products at all costs I typically do have very sensitive skin but lately I have not been having any issues with nail products but um, prolonged exposure to certain nail chemicals can cause allergies um, and other types of um, contact issues with your skin so please keep that in mind when doing nails um, so I'm just going to attach the moons to the three blue nails and then we're going to go ahead and top coat and that is going to conclude the nail set. Um, I think that my daughter did a wonderful job designing these nails. I think that they, it, the idea behind them was absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm glad that my application and my um, execution of her nail design idea came out as good as it did, although I did struggle with the acrylic. And here you're just going to see me use my mini LED flashlight real quick just to secure the moons so that I do not nudge them or mess them up um, when I am applying the top coat. And I'm just going to go in with my Mia Secret Glass Finish Gel Top Coat and top coat the four nails on the hand separately from the thumb because I do like to do the thumb separately um, because I feel like it cures it better if you give it more attention in the light um, and it also because the hand is so bulky it doesn't really fit under this little light as well um, and this is the SXC lamp that I got with my butterfly poly gel kit um, it's very compact and it's very useful when doing um, these tutorials because of the angle I have to be at because um, I'm using the phone as a camera so there's extra stuff in my area than there normally would be when I'm doing nails um, so I did like I did want to use this because it's more compa compact and more convenient but yeah so we're just gonna do the top coat I'm gonna wipe down the sides so that the top coat does not add extra bulk and this is my favorite part right here I always think that it looks so cool <laughs> in the lamp um, and yeah, so these are the finished nails. Um, she absolutely loved them, and she said that I did a really good job, so that meant a lot to me, um, especially, you know, because it's Mother's Day. And 
you know, I hope you guys enjoy your weekend. Spend time with your family. Um, you know, have a good meal together. Catch a movie. You know, spend some quality time with your family. I find nowadays that we are so busy as a society. We don't really spend time with our families anymore. And we tend to not value the time that we do spend. So even if it's just a quiet night in, you know, enjoy time with your mom, your grandma, your aunt, your family, your kids. And, um, you know, just just really value that time that you get with them because, you know, we never really know when we're going to part. And, you know, family really is one of the most important things. So I hope everyone enjoys their Mother's Day and I'll see you in the next one. Be safe out there.